Devastated? Confused? Heartbroken? So many times in life, we get thrown for a curve and don't know how to react. I can tell you the first time I had sex, how was my marriage going to survive? It's, it's over. I remember standing in front of the judge with my three-week-old baby, looking at my ex. I saw the look on his face, and it was complete rage. Welcome to When Life Throws You a Curve and how to make the adjustment with your host, Katie Hamilton. Hey guys, I hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to One Life Throws You a Curve and how to make the adjustment. I'm Katie Hamilton. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, Today's gonna be a short podcast because I'm gonna try actually and get two in this week. Wouldn't that be something? Um, So as you know, today we are going to tackle the you and pursue since we are still on the Pursuit Unity series. And um, there are three main, I'm just, I'm y'all, I'm just diving right in. Uh, I was actually at the studio earlier today and I was recording other things. Didn't get to record my podcast, but hey, um, the last one that I recorded at home, the audio was better in here. So I'm very hopeful that that will be the case today. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. The you in unity, uh, I mean, I'm so sorry, the you in pursue. Uh, There's three main topics that I want to cover. And the reason that I want to do two podcasts this week is because, you know, before COVID happened, I was just starting to tell you guys about my early part of my marriage and um, kind of painting the picture of some things that happened to me as a young adult that really mold and shaped me to be the woman that I am today. And also like some of the reasons that I feel so passionately about the things I feel so passionately about. Um, One of those things is the topic of unforgiveness or forgiveness. Uh, Another one with the you is staying unoffended. So we have to have unforgiveness if we're going to pursue unity we have to be unoffended if we're going to pursue unity and we have to have understanding for others and understanding of the gospel of Christ just so we know how to act, how to react um, and how we're supposed to live our lives because it is definitely the will of God that we, that we live in unity with each other. So, um, but I did, so before COVID happened, I had, like I said, I was telling you guys about my early part of my life and then we switched gears and um, I already had guests set up, but I also was talking about more COVID specific, um, when life throws you a curve, specific things like practical tools that you can do. And of course, America needs, you know, we need to be united right now, which is why I wanted to do the um, you, Pursue Unity series. And of course, I still you know, want to finish that out and I'm going to. Um, but in the meantime, I want to fill in some gaps on uh, some of the things that happened in the first year of my marriage because one, they go, parts of them go hand in hand with what we're talking about. And two, some of the subject matter, I, I got the importance of those concepts and those topics during that first year of my marriage. So that first year was very eventful. Uh, but the last non, non-COVID, pre-COVID was Josh's birthday bash. And I had, I mean, I was just about to enter the freaking battle zone, the danger zone, the war zone, whatever you want to call it. It was, oh baby, it was a battlefield. It was something else. Um, but COVID hit and that's been a whole a whole nother battle that we're, you know, we're still in it. Um, but you know, we're, we're in it and we, we got to keep going. We've got to keep going. And we do, I'm, I'm serious about us as a country, you know, really being united. So, um, so, so let's get to it. All right. Unforgiveness, unoffended, understanding. And I'm going to talk about Paul a little bit more. So I'm going to talk about offense first. Um, You know, uh, offense has always been an interesting thing to me. And 
I, I don't know why, maybe I'm just wired this way, but I've always been surprised at how easily people get offended. Um, girlfriends, you know, growing up in, you know, elementary school, high school, even as adults, there has, I'm just, w- one thing that surprised me about offense is that sometimes people are offended about something that actually never even happened. They might think that someone said something about them, or maybe they feel like somebody meant something in a way that they didn't mean it. And then they just get real upset about it. And then they're going to think about it. And then they're just going to get more and more pissed off. And they don't even tell the person or say, Hey, you know what? When you said X, Y, or Z, that that hurt my feelings. Um, And give that person a chance to be like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even mean that. Oh, you took that that way. I can't tell you, uh, some of there's been some big situations in my life where, um, or I guess I've, they've been like in my, my, I guess my family life, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not directly, um, maybe not something I said necessarily, but I was around the situation and there and, you know, eight or nine years would go by and, you know, somebody would say, Hey, I just, I, I just, I just can't believe that, you know, they did this to me. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And I would re restate the actual conversation because I was there and I I heard the conversation. I was like, no, they weren't talking about this. No, they were talking about that. You've thought this, this whole time. And you've, I mean, that would break my heart too, you know, but of course not. No, they would never say that. Like, that's not, that was not their intention. You know, things like that, they're, they're unfortunate, but the enemy loves, he loves to have something happen, you know, a misunderstanding. And then he will just feed, feed, feed what was truly just a misunderstanding and turn it into just a straight lie and then have you believe that lie and then you'll just sit with that offense and and eventually it will be straight unforgiveness and then you know you're going to get into bitterness and resentment and a lot of times it's over something that actually didn't even happen now granted i have been and fully experienced a great deal of things that actually did happen that did happen and I've, you know, I've, I've chosen to forgive, but I can tell you that before I understood the benefit of forgiveness for the person doing the forgiving, I mean, that obviously was not my go-to. I, I'm a, a kind of stubborn person, a little determined and very passionate. And I'm a justice person, as we know, of course, I do love grace and mercy, but I'm very much justice. And I can tell you before I understood forgiveness, the way that I, um, learned it in my early twenties, that would not have been my, Oh, let me just forgive them. I'm just going to forgive them. Oh, no, no, no. I was not trying to do that. So I had to go through some really, really painful experiences so that I could really get this understanding of what forgiveness is and why it's important what's critical to our survival and why it's a gift to the one forgiving so much more to the one than I mean in, in the human realm, it's the, you know, in the God, in God's realm and God's economy, obviously we've been forgiven of, of sin and, and blows my mind that God feels blessed by having a relationship with us, you know, but obviously we are a huge, we get the benefit and the blessing. Um, in a human relationship, yes, the person that we're forgiving may absolutely get a benefit, but we get the blessing guaranteed and we get benefits too, um, because it's, it, well, we're going to get into it. Um, but so often offense happens and instead of just trying to clarify and have some understanding, have an accurate understanding of the situation 
of the context of the conversation of the person's intention like what was their heart intending and, you know we just skip it we skip trying to understand what they meant and we're just going to go straight to offense and probably we're just going to go straight on into unforgiveness and then we're gonna it will be a spiral and the next thing we know it's been five months or six months or who knows years have gone by and we have just been fuming about something that actually didn't even exist or didn't even happen. But even if it did happen, there is no freedom where there is unforgiveness, period. You are wrapped around a, a cord that you're just continuing to, to strangle yourself with. And until we sever that cord by forgiving, it's going to choke us. It's going to rob us of living a life of joy, freedom, all of the things that God has for us. And for sure, reaching our destiny, which, you know, we talked about um, last week. So I'm going to read a part of Philippians. Uh, I think this is the NIV. And it's just what I had right here. Um, but this is about unity. And, you know, having one mind. So let's, let me, let me read to you. Um, all right. Where shall I start? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Oh man, this is such good stuff. Um, but where did I want to start this? Mm. I'm so sorry, y'all. Just thank you for having patience. Yeah, I figured it was on the next page. Okay. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit contending as one man for one faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now here that I still have. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with his spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. So clearly Paul is, you know, pleading with the people to be united, you know, having a like-minded faith being because in the part that I didn't read, you know, he talks about people that, you know, some people preach about, you know, preach because they're envious or they preach, you know, because they, they have rivalries with, you know, with each other or they're preaching out of selfless am ambition or sincerity of heart. He says, but why does that matter? Who cares? Who cares why they're preaching? The point is, is that Christ is being preached. So get over it. Like don't get caught up on, you know, people have to answer for what they have to answer for. We all have, we all have to answer for something for our behavior, obviously. And if Christ is being preached and people are getting saved and transformed, that's praise God. Like God can handle the other stuff, but he just, he is pleading with these people to just stop being petty, you know, stop getting hung up on things that really in the grand scheme of things, it, it doesn't matter. It's small stuff. Like don't sweat the small stuff, like be like-minded, be, you know, bold in your faith, be united in your faith, 
you know, and live as Christ, live in humility. So that is, um, it, it's so important. Uh, he goes on to say, and this, I'm, I want to read this because I actually just, I just think this is beautiful. He says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and perverse depraved generation in which you shine like the stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in labor or for, or did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. I just, I love that he is talking about them shining like stars in a, a, uh, and being without fault, blameless and pure, blameless and pure. If you guys stick with me long enough, you will find why those two things are two of the most important things to me. I know I say that about so many things, but they, they really really are. I say all the time to my kids, you know what? Just, you got to be blameless as much as you're able, be blameless, be blameless, have a pure heart. That's when we started this series on uh, pursuing unity. It had to start with a pure heart. We can't do anything if, if our heart is not pure because everything out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks people will see our motives at some point. They're going to see the truth about us and we cannot fake it forever. No. So what's in here is absolutely going to come out and God wants us to be united. He wants us to have a right understanding of his word and of the people around us in unity, not, not sweating the small stuff, not getting in petty arguments over stupid things. You know, there's big issues and there's silly, stupid issues that are just a waste of our time and energy. And I don't want any part of that because it slows me down. It keeps me from pursuing and entering the promised land that God has for me and entering that divine destiny that God has planned for me. And that's where I'm trying to go. And I want to bring my children there with me into their own promised land. Like I want to get the victory prize that Paul talked about last week. I want to run my race with endurance and I do not want to run or labor in vain. And being offended is one way where you will just mess yourself up and you get to choose. Am I going to be offended or am I going to either seek clarification or am I just going to choose to forgive? Or am I going to let it go? You know, like let's think of the big picture and what do I really want? Okay, y'all, I have to take my daughter to the doctor. So I'm going to hit pause. I will be back tonight and we are going to finish talking about um, understanding, but we're really going to talk about unforgiveness and stay tuned. So I will be right back. Hey guys, I want to talk to you for a minute about what for apparel. Whether you're an artist, a musician, an entrepreneur, business owner, influencer, have a social event coming up, or even someone with just a really fun idea for a single t-shirt, What For Apparel is the answer you've been looking for. What For Apparel is a print-on-demand company. They actually produce all the merchandise for this podcast, by the way, that will turn your ideas into a reality. If you need t-shirts for your business, What For Apparel has you covered. Have a family or a high school reunion that you've been wanting matching t-shirts for? What For Apparel also has you covered. Want to give us that special someone in your life a one-of-a-kind gift? What For Apparel has you covered there too. What For Apparel offers a wide variety of items from shirts to hoodies, pillow covers, coffee mugs, totes, and everything in between. Go to shopwhatforapparel.com to select the shirt you want to order and create your own design. They will print and ship the order directly to your door. 
If you need to place a bulk order of 15 items or more, they will even offer you a discount pricing. But be sure to use the code CURVE15 for an additional 15% off of your purchase. Go to shopwhatforapparel.com to get your custom apparel made today. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, I have moved into my closet because one of my kids is sleeping and my, my day's been kind of wild. I feel like I say that every time I'm on here. I don't know if I do, but I, I'm pretty sure I think it. Um, when I took a break earlier, I was taking my daughter to the doctor and it turns out we were there for her knee and for her ankle, but mostly for her knee. Turns out she has a broken ankle. I guess her, her knee has been weak and she's got a stress fracture there, but uh, I guess when it gave out, it she fell and yeah, she's got a broken ankle. So never a dull moment. Uh, then I had a business meeting uh, at night, which I don't usually do. And uh, by the time I got home, got my kids in bed, I have some things going on tomorrow that definitely I had to uh, give my attention to after I put my kids to bed. Not that it's more important than this podcast for sure, but time was of the essence and I just, I needed to get that in. Um, So now it is 3.30 in the morning and I am bound and determined to get this podcast in and turned in, which will now be later this morning, but I want to get those two podcasts done this week. So I left off uh, talking about um, unforgiveness and understanding, uh, as well as living in a state of unoffense. And I'm going to uh, quickly address understanding, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on unforgiveness. And normally, I would have spent an entire podcast talking on this very important topic. But because I'm going to talk about my birthday situation, because that's where we kind of left off with Josh's uh, story with me, it was his first birthday party that we were married. Um, Since my birthday is coming up on Sunday, I wanted to share my first birthday as a married woman, which was quite a long time ago. And, um, anyway, uh, so I guess the first year of marriage, is going to be a little out of order, but I will fill in all the blanks. And if you guys have questions, just ask me. So goodness gracious. All right. Um, I think that we all know understanding is, is it's important for us to feel like we're understood, right? Um, so if it's important for us to feel like we are understood, we should definitely extend that same grace and really give people the benefit of the doubt. One thing, and, and I'm not, you know, crap talking to my ex-husband here, but one thing that was a resounding theme that really, really was hard for me is that I was always guilty until proven innocent. You know, if I was ever proven innocent, And I didn't really ever grow up that way. I never, um, hang on, you know, I have to get my fabulous water. I love this water. I don't know why I think I can do a podcast without it. And I even have a wit when life throws you a curve, fancy little mug that I should be using, but you know, I'll use it for my coffee in just a couple hours. Um, Anyway, I didn't grow up giving uh, or not giving people the benefit of the doubt. I definitely figured, okay, well, you know, if someone said something to me and it wasn't right or accurate, I just figured they were mistaken or they were confused. The last thing in my mind would have, would have been to think, oh, you lied to me. Oh, you know, that was intentional. Um, And as I got older and, you know, started dealing with different types of people, I noticed that other, other people did do that. And I, well, not only did I not like it, I also just didn't get it. I'm like, 
can't people just be like mistaken? Like, can't we just like be, be accidentally wrong about something, you know, like, I'm so sorry. I, I thought it was going to um, be sunny today, but yeah, I know it's raining. You know, that's just a, it's just a mistake. I'm just mistaken. It's not like I'm willfully leading you to believe something that is in an effort to intentionally deceive you. That's what I believe a lie is. And, and for a, and for a, uh, a purpose that would harm you or, um, you know, all, sin and lying. Uh, it's all an attitude and posture of the heart. I mean, God says like, if we even think a bad thought, that's, you know, in his mind, like we've, we've done it, we've committed it. So of course all of us fall short. Um, but you know, one thing that, that I'll just go ahead and say when I was married, I always felt like I was guilty until proven innocent and not just with my husband, just with, you know, people that were kind of in our world, but, but with him too. And I always definitely went out of my way to give I always gave him the benefit of the doubt. I always was believing the best, to, to, you know, probably to the point of like, you know, just you're a little bit naive there, sis. You need to get with it. But, you know, I was young and I really, I, I didn't do that just for him. You know, I really do. I really do believe the best about people. So when I, so it's a very big deal to me for me to say, Hey, you know what? I really am. am I have concerns about this person or I have concerns about these two people or three people and people. It's very rare. So when I, when I do have that check in my spirit, I pay attention to it because the times that I haven't, Oh baby, it has not worked out well for me. Um, but you know, like I was saying, we all want to be, feel like we're heard. We want to feel like we're understood or at least that people are trying to understand us and see from our perspective. So, you know, if, if we never feel like we get that level of respect, that is another thing that is going to, you know, create, um, division and it's going to make it harder for us to have unity. Now, there are certain things that you guys have gone through, certain things that I've gone through, certain things that, you know, people all over the world, we all have our own experiences. So it's not like we can understand it in the sense that we know exactly how it felt. But if we, you know, that's where empathy comes in, sympathy, compassion, you know, understanding, okay, wow, like thinking, what would I feel like if I were in that position? That would be hard. Or, you know, taking people at their word. I mean, yes, of course, it's a risky business. I understand. I've been hurt. You know, we've all been hurt, but I would rather live my life giving people the benefit of the doubt and believing that, you know, maybe they don't have the worst intentions. Um, now always like, of course, I'm going to be on my game. I'm going to be tuned into the Holy spirit because I said, if I have a check, check in my spirit, which am I, what I mean by that is like, if I feel unsettled or I don't have peace about it, uh, call it like, woman's intuition or mother's intuition because that's a real thing that is like absolutely a real thing and side note um i think it's one of the reasons one one of many that it's important for most men to be married uh you know the bible says it's not good for man to be alone and you know i've done some studying heard some um people that, you know, also have studied this out and there is a component to marriage where, and I may not be saying it exactly right. So, you know, just, just take it for what it's worth or do your own research. But there is a, a component to marriage where a man is 
uh, if he's married, he is going to be able to reach a level of success, um, fulfilling like the purpose that God has for him that he otherwise most likely would not have been able to fulfill if he had not been married. And I found that fact very fascinating. You know, I mean, it says that women are the helpmate, you know, it doesn't mean that we are less than man, you know, but, uh, men come from us, obviously we birth them and, you know, God formed us from the, the rib of a man so that we could walk, walk alongside them and help them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a really cool thing. You know, there's one is not better than the other. Uh, my battery is at 8%. Wow. Well, you know, it's just getting more interesting. Let me just speed it up. Let's see if I can beat that battery. Um, anyway, I just, I think that fact is fascinating, but I do want to encourage you guys, like, let's not jump to conclusions. If we have a question, if we have a concern, if we think maybe somebody either misunderstood us or maybe we could have misunderstood them, like, have a conversation. Let's have a conversation and not an accusatory conversation. Just, Hey, you know, I, I heard you say X, Y, and Z did, is there a way I, I could have misunderstood that? This is how I took it. You know, give people the benefit of the doubt and let them, let them be guilty before we start, you know, casting judgment, because if we're trying to be unified, folks, we have to learn to love. That is such a big deal. I mean, at the end of this life, when we stand before God, I know he is going to ask us, did you learn to love? And I want my answer to be an overwhelming. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. All right. Ooh, 7%. All right, y'all. So I'm going to give you the short version of forgiveness of this lesson and maybe Friday I can expound on it, but it is important and we are on you and I want to talk, talk to you guys about the, the stuff I want to, you know, my birthday thing. And then I think we'll be able to tie it in, but if not, we'll jump into our um, next week. So as most of you know, um, the first year of my marriage was very, very tumultuous. It was brutal. It was horrific. It was shocking. It was painful. It was, it was the worst. Oh baby, it was the worst. And it was such a surprise that it was like, I had no idea, no idea. I said in a previous podcast that it was kind of like Josh waited just long enough, you know, for me to fall in love with him, uh, get married. I got pregnant a month after we got married. Uh, we bought a house, we moved in and then bam, relapse, which I'm like, okay, I've told the story, so I'm not going to go all into it, but I'm like relapse. Like, what do you mean relapse? That means there's like a problem, like a drug problem. Well, like, where was that information? You know, he had just waited just long enough. Uh, I'm thinking, okay, I can't get an annulment. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm pregnant. Like I, I made vow. I took vows. Okay. I'm going to really, I'm going to figure this out. You know, I told y'all I'm, I'm stubborn as in determined, passionate. Like, and if I make a commitment, I want to follow through. Hence it being 341 in the morning. And I'm, trying to finish this podcast because I know I've not been able to be as consistent as I want to be. And it, that bothers me. I'm, I like following through on my commitments. So, um, bound and determined to make this marriage work. And I endured so much. And so this is what I'm going to, all the so much, that's what I'm going to come back to and expound on. And that will be part of my birthday episode on Friday, my birthday Sunday. So it'll come out Tuesday. But, you know, after going through tremendous, tremendous pain, betrayal, shock, horror, it was, it was horrifying. Okay. And I mean, I don't, I'm, horrifying. 
uh, I got that protective order, that very first one, up in front of the judge holding my six, my my three week old baby Sierra in front of the judge, which I didn't know. You know, you're not really supposed to have kids in the courtroom. I didn't know that. I didn't have an attorney. I, you know, I mean, it was. This is what you got to do, girl. I knew I had to do it. I didn't want to do it. I wanted so badly. I tried everything else, everything else before reaching that point of like, okay, mm, this is what has to happen. So I, before the judge, I get the protective order. And, you know, I had grown so much in my relationship with the Lord during that first year. While it was the most difficult time of my life up until that point, for sure, there was a lot of just because I was so out of my element, out of my like realm of like, what the freak am I going to do that all I could do was just pray, you know, pray, pray, pray. And I, I, you know, I heard God say, wait, wait, wait. Well, you know, sometimes you just get tired of waiting. Um, there's purpose in waiting and, and we're going to talk about that another day. But I, I just was like, you know, I just can't, I just can't handle this anymore. I don't know what to do. So I went to my pastor's house and I told him and his wife every single thing, all the details, every single, everything that Josh had done to me that first year of marriage. In fact, I think we had been married for about nine months at that point. And I just let it, it all out. I didn't spare any details. If I needed to exaggerate, I would have. I didn't need to exaggerate, but I would have. And I knew my pastor had a lot of wisdom. And, you know, I had been praying for wisdom since I was like five years old. So I knew wisdom was important and I knew I wanted it. I wanted more and more and more and more as much as I could get. So I asked, you know, I'm t talking to Jimmy and Beverly, my pastor and his wife. And I'm like, what do we do? Jimmy says, oh, I have, I got the, I know what we're going to do. I know exactly what you need to do. I was like, you know exactly what I need to do. Okay. Oh, okay. Then well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's, how are we going to get him? Let's get him. Let's get him. And Jimmy looked at me and he said, Katie, you need to forgive him. I was like, hold up, Jimmy. Did you not just hear um, all of the things that I just said, like I gave you the play by play of the last nine months of this whole oh, horrific circumstance that I'm in. Um, what are you talking about? I actually thought he had like a plan to inflict pain on him, you know, like to get him. And he said, I, Oh, he said, Katie, I heard you. I heard, I heard all of it. I heard all of it. You, you shared it very clearly. I got it. He said, but you're playing that rewind button over and over and over in your mind. And your, your unforgiveness to your, to your husband is not affecting him. It's affecting you. He said, and I knew, and I knew he was right when he said that. I was like, Oh crap, that's true. Dang. And I knew I had grown so much with the Lord, but this feeling of like bitterness and resentment and anger. And while the anger was warranted, it was a very unjust circumstance that I was dealing with. Um, and anger itself is not a sin. Okay. Anger itself is not a sin, but like in our anger, we are not to sin, you know, but I'm, I'm like seeking revenge. I had not quite discovered the difference of revenge and justice. And I'm, you know, maybe seeking justice, but what I was really seeking was revenge. I was trying to get him to pay. Um, and so Jimmy says, no girl, you got, you got to forgive him. If you want, listen, if you want to move on, if you want to heal, if you really want your relationship with God to keep growing, this is what you're going to have to do. And I was like, I mean, I knew really quickly. I was like, dang, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's going to let him off the hook. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve that. He does not deserve that. And then it was like, I heard God say like, Katie, remember I died for you. Like we, everybody falls short. I'm not excusing Josh's behavior. Okay. But like, I also couldn't excuse my behavior. I had sinned. I, I wasn't perfect. I fell short. 
I needed grace and mercy. I needed him. Uh, I needed the cross. I needed forgiveness. And at that moment, I, I got it. And it went from like being horrified by the thought of forgiving him to just wanting to be an obedient daughter of God and, you know, doing something that, cause I, I had made some whack choices, you know, before I got pregnant, I was, you know, out doing the thing out the club, out of the club, just, you know, having fun. The party didn't last real long. Cause I got pregnant real fast. And then it was like, mm, party's over. Um, but of course, you know, I've been so blessed by Julia and all my kids. Um, and God used her so much to just like, you know, bring me back to him and, you know, back to reality. I mean, who knows what, I mean, who knows, but, uh, I did, I, I knew I also needed grace, mercy, and absolutely forgiveness. And if I had been forgiven, then I needed to extend that to Josh. And I also wanted to be free, of course, from all those feelings I was having of anger, bitterness, and resentment, although I didn't think it was going to be a, a quick fix. So I just had to, I had to call him and I had to tell him I forgave him. So I called his grandmother's house and, um, some things had gone on a couple weeks before, which I'll tell you about another time, but fascinating, fascinating thing. So he very, very reluctantly got on the phone and I just said, Hey, I know we're not really supposed to talk. I'm going to keep you on the phone for just a second. I just want you to know, I forgive you for every single thing that you've done to me. And, you know, we, you know, I mean, I thought our marriage was over for sure. Absolutely, for sure. I mean, my gosh, I had a protective order, you know, in place for, I think it was two years or something. Um, I said, you don't have to change your behavior. You don't have to be sorry. You don't have to apologize. But I said, and you don't even have to want my forgiveness, but you're going to get my forgiveness. I'm giving it to you. Like, you know, he didn't have a choice. He, he was getting it. And, you know, he didn't really have much of a reaction. He just said, uh, okay. And I was like, okay, well, all right. Good talking to you. You know, we hung up and you know, his lack of reaction didn't phase me at all. Like it, it was so, I, I mean, I, I knew instantly, like it was so not about him, but I will tell you what God did. He did this. And I know forgiveness isn't always this, the, the blessings are not always as instantaneous, but in this situation, God chose to bless me immediately. I mean, like that and took every single feeling of anger and bitterness and resentment away from Josh in an instant. I mean, I felt, I felt so free. I felt so like this burden that I've been carrying around and this stress and this devastation and this torment and this anger you know, and this thing that was really hindering my, my relationship with God and my walk with God and my growth as a believer, it was just gone. And, and it, it never came back. It never came back. And when we ended up, you know, fast forward reconciling, I did not have to deal with those feelings coming back up. You know, it wasn't like I had to throw, I didn't throw anything back in his face. I didn't ever say, Oh, do you remember when you did? Da -da -da -da? No, I didn't do that because I'd forgiven him and that the, the, the pain was gone and God just healed my heart right then. And that was such a blessing to me. I know Josh got the benefit. He got a benefit of, of my forgiveness, but I got the blessing and our family got the blessing because we were able to be reunited. Had I not chosen to obey, obey God and forgive Josh, there would have not been a chance for a, a reunification and a reconciliation in our marriage. And obviously I know we're divorced now, but I will never forget the lesson of forgiveness and never want to ever live in a state of unforgiveness because it truly is. It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And who wants that? So if there is somebody out there on your mind right now that you think, you know what, I, I wronged them. I need to ask forgiveness or you know what, 
I am really holding a grudge against that person. Like if you're think, if you think about that, that doesn't feel good. So I would just encourage you as hard as you feel like it might be, and maybe it's hard. You may have to forgive them a thousand times that day, every day, you know, but keep doing it because it's a choice. Love is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. These things that we're talking about, these are choices that we make and we have to be determined to make the choices and our heart will follow our mind. It really will. So be led by the spirit, extend forgiveness, have understanding with others. Um, and, you know, like let's live in unity and stay in an unoffended state because that will, that will just keep you free. This, all of this that I'm talking about will keep you free and give us the best chance for unity in the body of Christ and our friendships and in the United States of America that needs to be a United State. All right, guys, I'm down to 1%. I got it. I got it in just barely. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week and stay safe, stay healthy, praying for all of you. Uh, DM me. Let me know what you want to talk about. If you have any questions and I will see you Friday and then on Tuesday and uh, tomorrow because I'm posting a whole bunch of stuff tomorrow and all through Sunday through my birthday. So, um, all right, I'm signing off and I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your night's sleep and uh, a good morning. Come find me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Katie Hamilton 32 on Facebook at Katie Hamilton and at one life throws you a curve 32 and on YouTube at Katie Hamilton. The content provided here was supplied by a third party for display on our platform. The content is not owned or created by real news PR. The views and opinions are those of the creator.